All right, we're recording. And so um, today in the SIG, uh, so John Sanda, he, last minute, he can't make it, but um, I think uh, he gave us, he sent an, an email, which I think is worth chalking over about getting started. But um, <clears throat> we have uh, Zane Malik here who asked to, um, asked to, quickly talk and he had an agenda item he wanted to talk about the project he's working on and so I would thought it would be great to um, considering like what that project does and what it's about for operators I thought it'd be great you know in, in just in the spirit of open source and inclusiveness and trying to figure out how we can work better with the project it'd be great to hear about what Zane is working on so Zane um, if you want to take it away and talk about Kudo. I guess I said it right <laughs> Yeah, sure. Thank you, Patrick, and thank you for adding the item on last minute. So uh, I'm work. Me, Andreas, and Matthias. Now he just joined. We are working on a Kuro project, and Kuro just got into like CNCF sandbox uh, during last last week or two weeks ago. So we are right now. If you don't know about Kuro, you can like I can, I will do like a really brief review like about what the Kuro is doing, but that won't be the main focus here. Our main focus right now is like how we can like works towards like helping open source community building you know, like production grade operators in that sense. And uh, I'm not just dropping in here for the Cassandra SIG meeting. I was joining a few meetings I joined. So we will take a Kudo Cassandra operator in, and we were trying to you know, like align with the community in that sense, right? So here uh, in the last meetings, uh, Jim mentioned like maybe Kudo could be like, you know, evaluated for building a community operator in that sense. And so I was working on uh, trying to find from my perspective what would be the gaps there and trying to fill in those gap feature gaps and try to present like this is now driven by you know, like the Cassandra community needs, right? So let me just share my screen and we will go through like uh, three small topics. So first we'll be like what is Kudo. Second is like uh, I will introduce Kudo Shame that is like experimental project that basically is driven for Cassandra community. And the third is just an example, a demo for the, of uh, Kudo Cassandra, but basically it will be using a generic CRD to install Cassandra. Let me just share my screen. So can you guys see my screen? Yeah, looks good. Perfect. So uh, what is Kudo? Kudo is basically so one of the ways to develop operators on top of Kubernetes. And uh, here we are like trying to do a declarative approach where users don't have to usually write like thousands of line of the Go code to get some operator up and running. And basically to de define that we are dividing the operator into plans, spaces, and you know, like steps where we can say like uh, how to deploy a certain workload on top of Kubernetes. And uh, the uh, operator is like basically defined into like some part like driven by like the hand charts in that sense, but it goes way beyond that the, what the hand charts are doing. And we have like three CRDs that are like operator version, operator and instance, right? So those are defining the the architecture of the Kudo. So uh, if, for example, if I want to install like, to like Kudo Kafka operator, I have to just define my operator, operator version. These are like in the YAML structure, like Kubernetes object. And when I create an instance, it will automatically create a workload that is related to, in the, to what is the operator developer of Kudo Kafka has defined, right? So Kudo controller is watching these CRDs and it will, you know, like just create that. So this, um, this is one approach to standardize creating the operators. And uh, I don't want to really go deep into that part. If you guys did a few videos and few tutorials already available, I will post the links in the, a Cassandra community channel if you somebody wants to follow up. But uh, the first thing that we noticed, like for me, when I was participating in the Cassandra SIG uh, meeting for this operator meeting, was like uh, the community is coming up together with a CRD spec uh, design, how it would look like. And this was really one of the few communities I have seen that are doing that. And I believe like this will be a standard way to go from moving forward where a lot of communities will you know, like agree on a spec and design. Right, so we wanted to contribute on that sense, and in that sense, like Kudo CRDs are just operator operator version instance, right? So there's no Cassandra Dev spec or Cassandra you know, like Dallas X CRD spec 
we uh, th that when I saw it was lacking, we started developing some you know like to fill in that gap. So at least we can be evaluated as a part of you know like a reliable solution for delivering a community operator. So for that, like what uh, this is the second part of the presentation. So later I can jump on the demo. So when it's happening, like when we are installing a typical CUD operator, we are installing the CUDA instance here and we'll you know, like create all the related workloads and the all the Kubernetes objects in the end for that are necessary to make this you know like workload healthy. For we are we just did one thing that's called CUDA shim. Shim is basically the idea about it like a dynamic CRD controller or generic CRD controller where is shim controller is watching you know, like a shim instance that has actually defined the crd spec and it's kickstart a generic crd controller that will be start watching you know like the crd that we have defined our of shim instance in this case like I, if i want to call my crd my dot kafka dev like and some api version v1 alpha one or v1 beta one that will be so we can define the behavior of the life cycle of the operator in my crd and it will be actually mapping that behavior into a CUDA operator, right? So we could go ahead, for example, in the day, like let's say the Cassandra community decide, like this is the spec of the CRD that we want to build. Uh, the CUDA community could just, you know, like, go ahead, uh, use that CRD and like just replicate that behavior in the CUDA Cassandra. So we could say like, uh, we are compliant with the Cassandra community CRDs, but a main drive behind that is also to help like if, Cassandra community is doing an effort to come forward and be a CRD spec. We should not put on the table for the Cassandra community that the only way going forward is using the CUDO CRD spec, right? So define the whole spec. We should give the freedom to choose their own CRD, which many other like companies that are coming forward for that, uh, they could choose to do that. So if somebody has like some questions about design, about CUDO, I will take a pause here before jumping into demo and uh, the, I would like to answer that and later I would like to show one of the few examples because one example that was done is the Cassandra. We are basically, we are taking the data stacks CRD spec to actually create a, a Kudo Cassandra instance, right? So basically Kudo Cassandra is right now because it's available but could be any community like operator in that sense. And uh, data stack CRD because we believe you know, like this is where the community will go. And uh, when the, Still, we don't have any community CRD, so we just uh, opted to take the data stack CRD just to like do for an example or demo here. Does anybody has any questions or? Yeah. Yeah. So how about it? This is. I, I will admit I don't know much about Kudo, so this is. It's it's Ben from Insta here. So with with the shim just to make sure I've got this around the right way in my head, the, you're translating the, um, the, the community spec or the kudo spec CRD and then generating a data stacks CRD, which then the, the, the data stacks operator then goes and takes, you know, provisions and, and does ownership of that. So that the developer is just interacting with that one common CRD, but, it could be potentially any operator on the back end. Uh, yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, yeah partially, yes. So uh, the idea behind Kudo is like uh, developers can like actually focus on the base stack and not how to build operators. So they can declaratively like define a operator definition. So I will just go ahead and show example of a shim instance. So here is a shim instance where it's saying like, you know, like uh, which Kudo operator to actually you know, install. But the, in the CRD specs, we are like telling them which CRD to watch. And uh, here are, you know, like just an example of a does sex CRD. But mm -hmm. for example, some pieces I'm putting, you know, like they, these are not defined here. So this node mem, MIB or node counts are basically the parameters to the Kudo operator, right? So let's say when I say the memory is here 512, it will translate into the Kudo operator. And we are defining like here, for example, this is the 5G will be stay 5G, but uh, this is the definition that we are translating into a like a CUDA operator. So users can actually you know, like go ahead and not user, but the operator developers, they can go ahead and write their 
uh, operating in declarative approach without knowing about control runtime or reconcile cycles or you know, like uh, writing uh, the all that you know, like extra mm -hmm. code that is necessary to write an operator. So when a user so, comes, and, so, yeah, go. I was just gonna say, sorry. So the end user who wants to deploy a Cassandra cluster on Kubernetes, what? Yeah. What spec are they writing with PRD to? Yeah, this, this, hey this is Hey Ben, uh, just FYI, you're, I don't know where your mic is, but it's nowhere near your mouth. <laughs> oh, sorry. How's that? <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Could you repeat that? Because I didn't quite hear it. I think Zane did, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah, so the I think end, like the yeah. end. Yeah. yeah, so the end user who's going to deploy a Cassandra cluster on Kubernetes which spec are they write uh, are they writing to in the shim case yeah this is the spec that they would be writing it would be exactly like what would be the writing for data stacks operator right so here they are writing just size two. they don't have to know about the underlying you know like implementation details or what is going on they would just mm -hmm. create like i want a cassandra data center of you know, like data stacks api version and size is two because I need like a two node Cassandra cluster and memory is like five twelve, right? Mm -hmm. So the other shim is actually translating this size to what it really means and what is the memory really means and translating it to the like, okay. like underlying good operator. So the, yeah, okay. exactly. So the point is like the end users, they should be just you know like uh, uh, interacting with the community CRD or in that case Cassandra data sex CRD, right? So they don't have to learn how Kudo Cassandra operator works, how like, uh, you know, like Cascops work or how other works. The whole idea is like the same CRD can be implemented in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is, so Ben, I think you, you know, I may be thinking the same thing is this is, this is a way to have multiple operators out there with a more like a, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Zane, is that this, this, you would only, you're like, if you were fully, like Kudo is your path, you're using it in your Kubernetes cluster, you don't have any other operators. You have a Kudo operator and the Kudo operator, um, it just assumes all the CRDs from anything else that you need. Is that right? Yeah, so I, uh, if I understood right, you're asking if that shim can translate into some other operator, right? So uh, is that the question? Like if it well, can, the CRD can... Yeah, I guess maybe what's um, where the Kudo project, where does it, what what need is it trying to fill? Um, what What yeah. is the gap that's missing in the Kubernetes ecosystem that it's trying to fill? Maybe that's a better question. Yeah, so yeah, like uh, that would be like, we probably don't have to talk about Shim to, you know, like answer that question because Shim is actually trying to fill some gap between Kudo and the like rest of the CRD specs. But what Kudo is like trying to fill in is like, uh, if I want to like, you know, like kickstart my operator and I'm coming from, let's say, Kafka background, right? And I'm really expert, I have a lot of expertise in Kafka and then now I have a built in workload. Uh, on top of Kubernetes for Kafka, and I want to build my Kafka operator, then first I need to learn like operator SDK or Kube Builder or, you know, like control runtime. Then I need to know, like, I have to know about the Go language. I have to learn the Go code. Then I have to know how to test those operators, right? Like if what I'm writing, and I have to know a lot of deep knowledge around writing operators, best practices in the, on top of Kubernetes, right? So there's like a kind of a gap between from where a workload a base tech expert could kickstart writing their you know, like base tech operator on top of Kubernetes. So what we see is like a lot of uh, mixed teams where a Kubernetes expert is coming up with a Kafka expert or Cassandra expert or like a, or Kubernetes developer is help with the help of like some other base tech technology like Elastic and they are writing these things together, right? And the time to market or time to you know like put to the production or anything like that is like really huge right now so it can take easily like from three to six months to actually write an operator if it's you want to publish it if it's for internal use it will still take time and a lot of iterations to get it right and if what if you want to do it with the help 
it's like Helm is lacking a lot of uh, lot of features that would make it a operator complete. And that's where we are trying to fill in a gap where we are not like quite like in the Helm, you know, like uh, realm, but we are also like filling gap where the operator SDK is like trying to fill the gap. So we can reduce the footprint of you know like writing and boilerplate of the code generating you know, like in the hack and how the control runtime is working and these kind of uh, friction that would create where a base stack operator is with a lot of real operator knowledge because they have run Cassandra in you know, like production for thousand hours or more than that and they have uh, a lot of uh, lot to say on how to build those operators right but there's like a huge gap in there where they can actually start writing and pushing it to the to you know like pushing it to a kubernetes cluster and i think like uh, here if i would let you know like matthias or andreas if they want to say something but um, it's it's like really has been like a huge uh, work from you know like kudo kudo team on that sense like where we are trying to find and fill in the gaps for writing easily the workloads on top of kubernetes right yeah if i if i can can just jump in a little bit i guess i guess what kudo is trying to do is like fill the 80 or 90 percent of operator sdk without the overhead of like go and the go ecosystem and the fully fledged uh programming language and in a more declarative way. Feels more like Helm than programming Go, I guess. And you can get, I guess, most of, of it uh, done. So that, that's basically the, the short version of it. I, so I was just talking to somebody last week about how Operator Hub is showing like this explosion of operators. It's almost becoming too much, right? Is this is this an attempt to try to get that under a better way and try to find a better way than 4,000 operators? As a matter of fact, there's operators for operators now. So, um, which, you know, is kind of, we're starting to do this because <laughs> of now operators no. for operators, mm. but that's no, not I, what this is, right? <laughs> no, I guess, I guess what we are trying to do is, is to make the number bigger, like 10,000 or 50,000 operators, because it, we make it easier to write operators. And yes, I think the more operators we have, the more problems we get in the ecosystem, like how do operators interact and how do we standardize between or how do we stand with different operators that do the same work, like, like what we're now trying to do with Cassandra, to have a common CRD. Um, yeah. We have that in I, mind, I, I guess. It comes up, but it's, it's not really in the focus of you at the moment. Yeah. And yeah, one more I, thing one, is like, yes, sir. Yeah, I, I guess one, one question that like, I had around this is, like, it, do you see a lot of the community, you know, having a genuine need to re-implement operators, you know, multiple times for spec? And, you know, like, I think, ignore the example of the Cassandra community, because I think a lot of these operators here kind of sprung up simultaneously. Um, you know, I, I guess, <clears throat> in, in my mind, the mental model for operators was, you know, for a given well-defined piece of technology, genuine, genuinely, there should only, you know, be one for any well, well-implemented definition. Um, you know, yeah. so I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm just trying to understand, you know, in the community, do you see people going, oh, well, hey, that implementation's not right. I need to write my own. And so having an easy framework to do that is a benefit. Well, I guess the, the benefit of having an easy framework is, is the maintenance overhead to like keep the maintenance low because I guess it's the same with any other software like like backup tools for Cassandra or backup tools for other databases. You you have like three or four or five projects on GitHub and uh, probably one of them gets most traction and the other ones trail off at some point. I guess it will be the same as operators. Yeah, I guess and, what, and, what's what's, yeah. getting, what's getting more interesting at some point is like, how do I write an operator for my actual application? 
So I have, I have an app in that needs Cassandra and Kafka and Elasticsearch. How do mm -hmm. I package that as a single operator to make it easily deployable? The light bulb just and went on. <laughs> All right. Now, I, does it manage dependencies in, in that as well? Or do, will it help with dependency management? Because this yes. is another pain point that I've discussed with a few large operators is that um, our operators are colliding. And is this a way to solve that problem as well? Yeah, yeah like we uh... just implemented a good operator task. So like actually when you're writing a good operator, you're writing like a bunch of tasks that needs to be done. So it can be applied to lead, you know, like pipeline task or toggle task. And one of the tasks is actually good operator task. So you can actually, you know, like bundle another operator inside the operator. So that's kind of how we solve the dependencies and we'll try to resolve the dependency and install it. So let's say for Kafka, I need Zookeeper, right? So this is like a dependency, like we would like to solve with Kudo. And this is like where uh, I have like just two things, like first, like coming back to like, as Ben said, like if we, we are seeing a lot of same stack CRD being implemented different times with a lot of, you know, like different uh, developers. I, this is not the case that we wanted to present here. Like we are doing actually this because uh, the Cassandra community is coming up with a CRD, right? And uh, we don't want to tell the Cassandra community, hey guys, like don't do this, just use a Kudo operator version or Kudo operator and it will work well, right? So the idea is like each community should be independent to define their CRDs, right? And there should not be any limitation from the Kudo side that I cannot build a Kudo operator on top of that CRD that a community after like a lot of hours of work have come together to define the spec. So this is the case we are seeing where a different communities like i hope kafka does that which i don't see in the like near future uh, mongodb or elastic they define a crd common crd and there should be only one operator in that space right like that is like also my desire and but i would like to see instead of you know like seeing 10 20 operators for each base tech and but kudo should offer a, an opportunity for those operator developers to build you know like an operator on top of that crd instead of like saying you know for Kudo, you have to get, go out of your way and do this. On the other side, like for developing like operator, like the second thing is like what Kudo is offering, like is also set off, you know, like best practices, right? So if you see like a lot of community operators and things like that, they don't have things like honor reference. They don't even you know, like really take care of how the things are like cleaned up, updates, how they are going to be done, upgrades, like the life cycle, you know, like and the cleanup, uh, basically this is you know like left for like a day two kind of you know, like things so first day is like yeah i if you spin up my install my crd a operator will come up but it's you know like it's a rough world so with this we are trying to solve from you know, like already from a uh, day zero like you know like if you are building an operator all the objects that are being created by this operator will be owned by you know like the this uh, instance core instance and then later if you are building and features we have like toggle task or other helpful, you know, like features which will help to introduce like iterative way of, you know, like development where a feature is added or removed, like, you know, like in a Kubernetes style. So this is also like trying to, we are trying to help with, uh, you know, like developers who are like really great developers, but they are developers for other technologies, right? But then they want to bring, bring their workload on top of Kubernetes. So that's also like one gap we are trying to fill with the this Kudo approach. It's very interesting. Anyone else with questions here? Ben. Uh, can I ask a question? This is Eldon from, from DataStacks. Um, did you, uh, were there specific, did you look into the, the operator SDK, Ansible or Helm? operator deployments at all and, and kind of like what were the primary issues that you you viewed from from those operator sdk deployment strategies yeah like so this has been coming up not like now like it's like it has been like in development from like a, almost a year and a half now like kudo so back at that day like it was already like uh, quite established and we know like how to build operators but the main 
point was like Helm was too less for us if we want to orchestrate, orchestrate like complex, you know, like workflows on top of Kubernetes. Helm is basically, yeah, like just create this and just delete this, right? So that was the thing. The operator SDK was not like that mature like that is as for today, but still uh, the first thing is like, I need to know how, you know, like Go language. I need to know like what are the Kubernetes basic concepts and I need to learn about them and uh, the entry level like you know like into the kubernetes world is like really huge in that sense like if you look at the first of few operators you know, like it can go from you know, like uh, 2000 lines of code to you know, like maybe hundred thousands of codes like if they depend on the complexity of the operator and we are we are like entering into a kubernetes world where kubernetes is trying to you know, like uh, uh, market as a declarative approach to you know, like run the workloads and easier for you know, like the developers who are actually building the application they can run those applications on top of kubernetes with the deployment or you know, stateful set or uh, the service you know, like so these are all objects that are helping the developers but if you want to build an operator then yeah you have to certainly learn a lot of few more other concepts and don't really fail with any of those concepts because you know like uh, that could be like really disaster for your production deployment in that sense, right? And we also see like, for example, examples of um, elastic operator that they were just running with pods, like, you know, like uh, without any stateful set, and they have to just rewrite all the things back to stateful set. So there was like, you know, like a lot of breaking changes in that sense. And uh, we just want to, and this can happen also with the other operators, right? Like when you're writing and it's your first time and you don't like, hit the right but like you know like right spec and then you have to rewrite it again so we are trying to you know lower that barrier and uh, make it easier for to writing operators uh, everything that okay. we are doing here could be done with operator sdk right so it's it's not like yeah we are doing something special that you cannot do with the go code that's not the case here yeah i was just the asking about the, the ansible code that you can use from the operator sdk or the helm deployments that you use from the operator SDK. Yeah, so like uh, this is like just uh, one of the few features we have been asked. Like, so we don't we don't have enough feedback for that. So if somebody wants to say like, I want to use Helm over like you know like Helm chart as a task, we are open to you know, like build that and like work on that. But as for now, there has not been enough feedback or people asking for that. Like, hey, I want to use Helm as a dependency, right, in my operator or Ansible in that case. So, yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. I wanted to say that the thing is, in this community, there are at least two teams or three that have already developed an operator. So we're not really the, the, the people that are interested in, in an easy way to develop because we've spent the time learning the Go code and all those things. So uh, I would have been interested if, if, if had you taken the, the CRD that we have been working with uh, Jim uh, to, to basically uh, describe the new CRD see, that we are trying to agree on uh, because we all have cut already and uh, I would like to know because the thing is why we did develop an operator for Cassandra was that because Cassandra is difficult to operate so you have to be able to do uh, really uh, touchy things at different times to, uh, for Cassandra to operate in Kubernetes. It's, I'm not sure there are other uh, things to, to run on Cassandra and on Kubernetes and Cassandra. So can you show us how you do, how you would say that's the, the task I need to run when I do a scale down, uh, for example, when people change the CRD and change from four or three to two nodes, uh, how do you describe in your CUDO what are the operations to be done on, on which nodes and at, in which sequence? I mean, there are loads of things that are very difficult in Cassandra. I mean, to, 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 to start a cluster with four nodes with a basic image, it's pretty simple, but that's not, you, talk, you talked about production time, time to production, and time to production is with the hardest bits coded, not the easiest. You see what I mean? I mean uh, I want to see the details because developing in, yeah. the, in the details. Yeah, so like I think like we have already like Kudo Cassandra out, so it has a lot of features in that sense. And uh, 
I'm like, we are not trying to say like everything has to be you know, like inside like uh, declarative YAML and the complex workloads cannot be done here. So what I would give you an example is like even like for a even more complex that is evicting nodes, right? So for example, when we are uh, doing this, let's say like I have a, like a node lost in a uh, Cassandra, like in a Cassandra cluster, right? And the local storage, we are using local storage in that sense, right? I'm not talking about like a AWS, EBS, CSCI driver, but for local storage, when it's totally gone and we, you know, like the nodes, new nodes comes up, you know, like if it comes up, it will join up as a new node, right? But the thing is like with the, for example, it will change the IP also, right? So we have to tell somehow the Kudo Cassandra that, you know, like this is a rejoining the node. So in that sense, like a complex operation. So right now, like no other operators, not even data stacks is like supporting that. So when the local story is gone and it's rejoining it, right? So it's always stuck in, for, for example, for data stacks, it's always stuck in the pending stage because the, the stateful set controller cannot detach the, you know, like the, the PVC from the, from the node. So till some manual intervention is coming, we cannot really do that, right? So in the case of Kudo Cassandra, like what we are doing is like, we have a, another controller that's the recovery controller that is just basically using Go code for, right? Like connecting to the API. So, but we don't have to know about reconcile cycles or like which objects we have to reconcile in that sense. What we are doing is reacting to, you know, like some series of operations. And if we go towards the, let me just show the bootstrap code. This is in the operator templates. So for example, we have a, one thing that is called Cassandra topology, right? So in, in the start, it's like empty, but when the bootstrap is happening, right? So we are filling it with the Cassandra pod name and the IP address, right? So we are making sure that the, once the node is in upstate, joining or normal, it's just register itself like I'm the nodes zero and my IP address is that. For the next time when it's starting and it doesn't have the same IP address and it's not a bootstrap node, that what we have to do is like use the replace flag, right? And here is the, I think I will have to search here. I was not. Mm. Uh, Andres, do you know like where is the script for? Oh yeah, here. So in the case like you know, if it has a replace IP, it has to you know, like this. This is one of the small examples, right? Like where we cannot replace a, a node when it's itself in the seeds, right? So we, first we have to remove ourselves from the seed because if it's coming, joining the cluster, we cannot just use it in the seed. So here's one example where if we are in the seed, we have to remove ourselves in the seed. And these are you know, like a bootstrap script, like just packed as config map to you know, like automatize this complex operation in that sense. And um, for the replace, yeah. Let just me start here. I'm cracking up a little bit about how much actual code is in a YAML file now. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a lot of. And it's there's there's special code in YAML files. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's that's a bit of discussion. <clears throat> well, and, and maybe on that bit of a sidetrack, while you're searching for it, how do you guys go about testing? you know, bash code like this kind of Im embedded in, you know, in, in your operator and that kind of thing. Like a, a good example of this is, you know, when we first implemented support for, um, you know, uh, T, you know, TLS between Cassandra nodes and also, you know, client to, um, client to node, the initial cut was, you know, we just hacked together some bash scripts, but it came very quickly, you know, hard to test, hard to verify that kind of thing. We ended up re-implementing in Go. Um, how do you guys kind of deal with that? Yeah, for, yeah. For testing, we use the, the curliness of, of, of Bash. 
Well, we don't we don't okay. test the actual bash code. We, we test the full operator and test that it that it works. And we can spin up an operator with TLS encryption enabled, and we test that the backup works, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. So oh, okay. as Andrea said, like we are we are using Kotal because that's another declarative way to you know like to test the Kubernetes operators, and that will be as part of the Kudo ecosystem. So instead of you know, like uh, testing the bash code and like the lines there, we are what we are testing is the Kubernetes objects, right? So we are testing here that the instance is complete. For example, the plan is complete, or there are two ready replicas for Cassandra. So for some reason, if it's not happening, you know, and we we know that what are the asserts that are failing in that place. And to to be honest, that, that is that is a pain point because at the moment. A full test run is like one and a half hour, which which is quite a bit. It starts like uh, I'm not totally sure, but I guess around ten, maybe fifteen Cassandra clusters and destroys them. So it, it takes a while. Okay, well, twenty minutes of that is is a Kubernetes cluster spin up and spin down, but it's still yeah. a, around one hour for for the whole testing yeah. cycle. Uh, but it's testing is not the hard part. Is when you have a problem, how do you debug? Where do you find the, the thing? I mean, in Go, if you have a proper defined IDE with telepresence or stuff like that, you can step by step debug what's happening in your operator within Kubernetes, and you can find where the problem is. Uh, that's well, to, to be honest, I doubt that a little bit. Debugging debugging an operator is. <laughs> Is, is kind of hard because you have like the it, whole it, Kubernetes it, system on the other side. It is very hard. So usually what but we work best for me is, is like running tests and getting a really big amount of logs and looking through that uh, and, and analyzing that. And I guess debugging a, a Go operator has, a, has its advantages. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how much of an advantages it actually is how, how often I would use it. But yeah like as we have like the testing over it is hard so like this is another way that we want to make sure that each step or each feature we are doing can be you know reflected into Kubernetes object because that's how you should develop operators on top of Kubernetes that like let's say if I'm creating some operations that are not like you know like super base stack for Cassandra to do a repair but if it's not leaving any trace on any Kubernetes objects, it's not really like a Kubernetes adopted operator in that sense, right? And uh, for that, let's say like if I want to do um, some kind of you know, like a config map of the Cassandra topology log, if it was last updated by Cassandra node zero, that test for us is like a better adopted than just go and you know, like trying to find a place to test the, if the bash script is exactly doing what it has to do. There are still like, uh, uh, Places that we have to say that we are not like you know like anti go in that sense. We we have tests that are in Go, of course, because we are Go developers also, right? So because we have built Kudo on top of Go, and so we we want to, but we want to give a choice to the operators if they want to work, like do that in you know like in uh, in Python or something like where they feel more comfortable, they can go ahead you know like and just write their test. For example, this for the external service of the Cassandra, we have the test in Go, right? So we are using Jinko framework and that like users can continue doing that. But for example, the point where we have to add a, you know, like a feature, the, the, the complexity is much more simple than just writing on operator SDK, right? So where you have to you know, like take care of like of the breaking changes and things like that. And this is all about like uh, the standardized way to develop operators. And I understand it could not be for you know like a real go like go expert or people who are really feeling for Kubernetes. But sometimes we just go and develop because you know, like we start enjoying that, right? And like writing like thousand lines of Go code and we feel comfortable just copy paste from the last operator we did and continue from there, write our spec and generate it. And uh, this is the I'm not saying this is the wrong way, but this is like actually doing a kind of uh, acting as like a gatekeeper for the other developers who have a lot of other you know, expertise and they could you know, like really contribute to Kubernetes ecosystem and they found it hard to do that. And uh, one of the reasons that we are doing that is basically 
in the last SIG meeting, I was, uh, I wanted to talk about the cuddle, like so we can find a conformance testing way of the Cassandra community to do like how to do conformance testing. That is basically from the outside of Cassandra operators, but uh, Jim asked if we, like the community should evaluate Kudo. So I volunteered to you know, like to present the Kudo here and also to fill in the gaps that would be seen from the community, like why this is like you know, a list of things that would be really ideal from the community to say like, we are not going to use Kudo because we are lacking this, 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 and that. It might not help like Cassandra community, but you have to be like, you know, like keep in mind, maybe if we develop those features for Kudo, maybe next community, like say Apache Druid that has like a really bad operator right now, they are just having a help job. They want to build an operator and uh, we don't have like Kubernetes expert in the Druid community. Might, they might use these features, you know, like what, the, what we get from this feedback from the Cassandra community. And they might go ahead and you know, like build an operator on top of Kudo instead of you know, like learning and somebody with Kubernetes knowledge land in the Druid ecosystem of BI and you know, like uh, everything. And then only that day we will have some serious operator that will be out there and you know, like available for to the community. So that's also like one of the main uh, drives of today's uh, presentation. Yeah. All right, well, um, this has really been interesting. Um, boy, I feel like there's a lot more to discuss here. Probably, I, I wanna go look more at the Kudo project and I think everyone else will too. Um, very interesting food for thought. Just. Just in general, how operators are working. I, I, I will admit I didn't know a lot about this project, but um, it seems like this is a this is a, a bid to change the way we do operators and Kubernetes in a way that's a lot more intelligent, um, or at least reliable. Is that the right word? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> consistent, uh, uh, appro approachable, maybe. Approachable, right? Sure. Um, now, whether or not this is the right idea or insight, like how much of this fits in the project, I'm not really sure, but it'll be up for debate. Um, okay, uh, any other questions, anyone? Uh, I, I was in, uh, hoping to do a demo, but I will leave Oh, if you wanna do a quick demo, it, that's fine. Uh, yeah, because yeah. yeah. this is being recorded and other people wanna see it. <laughs> okay, perfect, yeah. So I will just go and do it like smart small 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 demo so we, what we have is you know like a just few steps how to start a like a standard like i think in the start somebody asked how the end user will look like so this is like from zero like you know all the steps that are included so we are not hiding anything here how it would look like right so first uh, you have the kudo initialized in your cluster so that is like with the Kudo in it, that can be possible. It can also be like a like a set of YAML file that will help to initialize that. And uh, so it's not like the Kudo CLI is not like compulsory, I want to say. And the other is like the shim controller, right, itself. So I'm going to deploy that in my cluster. I have just a kind cluster here. So yeah, the deploy is just deploying like the CRD for the Kudo shim, search account, like the typical things we need for a typical small operator. And now I'm going to install this CRD spec. But let me first show that what is in here. So this is CRD spec just taken from the data stacks operator repository like github repository so i'm just going to you know like install it uh, as it is coming there's no modification done from like you know kudo shame or anything like that it's just taking a spec from the community and creating the crd here and nobody is watching actually this crd right so at this point we can actually create the a shim object let's go this i showed the shim object is basically the definition or stacks to tell the shim controller that we need a generic CRD controller to watch a certain CRD, right? Like with the API version that is kasana.sec.com slash v1 beta one and the kind is kasana data center. So the time that I create this 
the shim instance, the shim object, what I see here is a some shim is being created. So what this is doing is at least going to watch all the CRD that will be created by the stack that is defined in the this behavior and kind, and we'll try to you know like react that and bind it to a CUDA operator that is also defined here. In that case, it's like the version 100. So now we can go ahead and go to the final step that is installing the like Cassandra YAML. Let me see, it's running. Also, let's see what is in. This is, you know, like for the end user, how it will look like a Cassandra data center object and with one size one node of the Cassandra cluster. So it has been created and what we will see is like actually, you know, like it has created a Kudo Cassandra instance. So let's just create it by here. The best way to see that would be, let me just, But it's like I'm going to check the Cassandra data stack subject, right? So not the the cool instance. We are just checking like what are the by the this Cassandra instance, what is going on behind the scene. Really like a lot of stuff happened here. So the Cassandra data center actually created an instance of the uh, of the Kudo instance, and Kudo instance itself is like taking care of orchestrating all this workload, service account, stable set. You know, like role role binding that are necessary here for disruption budget for the you know, and if I go to the pods here we have like a Cassandra instance node that is you know like initializing and um, it's basically a one node Cassandra cluster that is being spin up by using the Cassandra YAML that was based on the that was sexy artist there if I go ahead and you know, like this is not like necessary to do but if we this free with all the goodies that the kudo is providing like diagnostics bundles or you know, like plan status in that case so we can see like what is going on so it's trying to deploy that it just deploy the you know, like rbec and the pre node is complete and now it's trying to deploy the actual node of the cassandra like cluster So it's still in bootstrap mode. So the, I will just go ahead. I think like this is not recommended, but in this case, I will just like add it the. And I'll say actually I need size two, right? Of the Cassandra, my Cassandra cluster. I think you're having network it's, issues. Uh, last... it's, it catches up though, luckily. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's it's MacBook performance issues. Yeah, yeah. could be. Can't run Kubernetes uh, they... and Zoom. <laughs> and and to yeah, Cassandra it's, it's... notes. Yeah. So no, like so, what I, I was just like trying to do the demo, like uh, just share, like just if I don't know, like where you guys lost me, but, uh, it just created like from Cassandra YAML, it just created a Cassandra cluster, right? And I think like that is like all you know, like small uh, demo that I would like to show like how in the these uh, three files you know like the CRD spec that is coming from the like uh, created by Terasect and Cassandra Shim that is defining the behavior bridge and Cassandra YAML we were able to create a Cassandra cluster running in our Kubernetes cluster. So I hope it doesn't disconnect more. So I will stop here and leave for some questions or if somebody has any. That was there. You could create all the objects because you described them in your operator in the YAML files. I mean, there, there's no magic there. That's, I don't understand. It seems to me like you have another implementation of an operator using YAML files and bash scripts. And, uh, but, I mean. No, like I, here we are trying to bridge between an existing Kudo Cassandra operator and, uh, you know, like a, a existing spec so it feels like easier but the behind the scenes it's because basically the kudo cassandra has uh, been implemented right so this is not like some magic is happening i think the better example in this yeah, case would be okay it means that you you guys did write your kudo 
implementation of Cassandra operator. So if yeah. someone else wanted to do it, he would have to learn your way of doing operators. And yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fine. yeah, for sure. Like it's like this is not bridging between any operator and any generic CRDs because then we won't be writing any operator. It will solve like the big problem, right? So the CUDA is trying to provide a standardized way to write operator, just like operator SDK is doing that. Uh, we feel like that's the native way of the operator SDK, but doesn't has to be like the native way, right? So there should be even more easier way to write operators. So the other example is like- uh, for Operator example, SDK allows you to write Ansible based uh, operators as well. Yeah, so what we could do that. If you, think, if, if, if you think this is like really, a, really good feature that I think like we will take notes and uh, if that is you know like going to drive to do more uh, good operator is like support for Ansible then of course it will be there right so being in the CNC, CNCF sandbox means that we can help the community and listen to community and like you know go towards like a direction which will help more and more people to write easily the operators right okay so like here is an example, like uh, just in case here, there's no magic. Here is like, I want to build a my stateful service, you know, like that's some kind of external service where I define my type, you know, like my ports and number. So this is like some CRD I'm defining to extend the service, you know, like behavior. And all I have to like, what I have to do is like create my CUD operator that you were saying, where's the like you know, kind of magic and define my task, my plans, and you like parameters here, right? Here we use Go templating, for example, in that sense too, it might help us into, you know, like write, generate other kind of, you know, like objects here. And in the end, what happened is like, I define my shim instance and where I'm saying, okay, the count will be the count. That is not, from where it's coming is from the count here, right? Because it's defined in the parameters. And uh, we can define the whole stack here and just create, go and create the service. So when this service is created, like uh, our service YAML, it will end up creating you know, like of the type load balancers, five external services that are pointing actually to the stateful set, for example, that was defined. Uh, let me just go and open an example. Like stateful set of the name my Kafka and the name Swiss default, right? So it will just create for the five ports of that and uh, each service, external service of type load balancer. So this is not like a real like use case that I would like to you know, like do. A, we are using that, but this is just an example how from scratch, from zero, to a working operator on a generic CRD or dynamic CRD, however we want to call it, without using any kind of Go code, we could actually write operators, right? All right, just keeping track of the time here. Um, I, you know, we have a few minutes left. Um, I, I will say if there's any more burning questions, but uh, this will probably be a great discussion to have on Slack or in the mailing list uh, to continue this. Um, but I think everyone is going to be probably go check it out the site. Um, I want to remind everyone that uh, John sent out a pretty lengthy email last night um, and had some questions. Some of it pertains to today. Um, if you can uh, take a look at that, I think we're, it, this is a great discussion point. There's a few discussion points. He asked some questions. So um, I would love to see some of that discussion happen there in the mailing list. Look, let's reply. Make sure and hit reply all. <laughs> um, but let's, let's take that conversation over to the mailing list. Um, I'll put a meeting on the calendar for next week uh, at this time, just so that we can discuss that mail, the, the email more, but I would like to see that we can discuss it while before then on the mailing list. Um, it's a lot of open information. Um, thank you, Zane, uh, and the rest of Andreas, thank you very much. Um, and Matthias <laughs> for coming and talking to us um, about this. This is, uh, this is, I'll classify this as something I did not know. <laughs> now I know things. Um, and I, I really do need, I need to go dig into this more myself. Um, 
Yeah, Eldon gives a thumbs up. This is something I did not know. <laughs> not something I had awareness on, and now I am enlightened a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks. I was okay. just worried about what I was going to do with the rest of my day. <laughs> uh, yeah, very helpful. Yeah, very helpful. Thank you. Um, thank you, Patrick, for like letting me add some last minute religion item so it was really really and i think like uh, uh, we like we will definitely talk on slack or mailing list and it will be really helpful you know like to all the good bad negative positive you know like feedback because we really want to take some kind of feedback and in that sense it will be like helpful to shaping the future features of you know like uh, operator builder toolkit like kuro yeah okay I didn't want to give negative feedback. It's just difficult to to give feedback on a, after a five day five minutes demo. It, it's complicated when you've spent months trying to to find the the right code to to. It seems quite magic. So and I don't believe in magic. So there, there has to be something behind. Anyway. Okay. There's no one on this call that should believe in magic. We're all engineers, <laughs> not product managers. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. That's that's why I want to I, I want to go spend the time. You're right, Frank. I mean, I don't want to uh, I I don't want to just trust Zane. Seems like a nice guy, but I don't trust you, man. I'm gonna go look at the code myself. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, thanks yeah, everyone. Be really helpful. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I. I'll post that on the, I'll get this video posted um, and uh, we'll get this out there. But yeah, stay tuned for next week and go look at the mailing list, dev mailing list. See you everyone. <laughs>